Hello and welcome. My name is Zenzel Ndebele and this is Asake Online. We bring you this special program where we are talking to the president of uh, the MDC Alliance, Nelson Chamisa. We know that in the last few months they've been going, uh, there have been stuff that is going on in the party, the recalling of the MPs, uh, the court judgments and all the things that have been going on. So we want to find out from him. What is the plan for the party going forward? What are they doing to rebuild? Is the party still there? Because we've had people always saying there's no opposition in Zimbabwe. So let's get all these answers from the president of the MDC uh, Alliance, Nelson Chamisa. Uh, Mr. President, my first question to you is, uh, we have seen that in the past year or so, that things have not been going okay for the MDC uh, in terms of the recalls of the uh, the MPs and uh, you know, the fights around Harvest House. I mean, tell us, what's your, what's your, what's your view on what is going on or what has been going on? Well, I must say that uh, what we've seen is uh, authoritarian consolidation, is uh, escalation of tyranny, uh, and we've seen the panic mode uh, by ZANU-PF and Mr. Menangagwa uh, on account of our strength. We have remained steadfast, we have remained very strong, and that's why you can see that they are in sixes and sevens. Uh, if we are such a non-factor and we are such a non-player, we are a non-actor in the politics of this country as an alternative, they would have simply ignored us. But they can't ignore us. They have discovered that we are too strong on the ground, and what they want to do is to decimate us, weaken us, attenuate our structures, but they will not succeed. They have tried every trick in the book. But the people are determined, the people are strong. Yes, the taking over or taking away of office of, is a temporary, you know. That building, uh, you know, it was possessed by ourselves and will not allow uh, these people to cause us problems uh, uh, around uh, uh, possessing it. We will we, we'll ultimately uh, go back there because they violated the law. But because we don't want anarchy and chaos, we, we do not want to take law into our own hands, we've said let the court process continue, uh, then it was established and settled things there. But not only that, they've also recalled our MPs. And in this regard, you know, Munangagwa has done so much to help us rebuild. You know, when you destroy the old, you are only helping me to rebuild the new. Uh, and we are already rebuilding, uh, we are already consulting uh, across the whole country to build a consensus and a convergence, a national convergence. Uh, I've been leader of a political party and I don't seek to lead a party anymore. I need to lead a country. That's why when I listen to certain people who always talk about eh, this G40, eh, this faction, that I'm beyond that now. My focus is to unite the country. I've gone beyond trying to unite an organization or a political party. It is to unite the people of Zimbabwe. And convergence is the key thing. That's why our theme this year is convergence for change. Yeah, uh, you know, we're talking about the issue of the MPs, we also have the councillors. So currently, with the position of the MDC, I mean the alliance, do you have MPs, the, uh, do you have councillors, what's, what's the situation? In fact, we have by law and by election, by the mandate of the people in 2018, all the MPs who were elected were elected on the card and ticket of the MDC alliance. But what we have seen is lawfare the abuse of the courts by politicians, in this case Mr. Mnangagwa, to try and withdraw, recall, through uh, his created surrogates, uh, you know, um, uh, whom you know, uh, to then say, uh, as far as they are concerned, all MPs of the MDC Alliance belong to the MDCT. So because a lot of our MPs and a lot of our councillors are people who are looking for opportunities. In fact, I've learned from what has happened, that instead of having people coming across as change seekers, change makers, change agents, they are actually job seekers. So the preoccupation is to preserve a job as an MP, the preoccupation is to preserve a job as a councillor. That has taught me a lesson, that we need to revisit the whole aspect and concept of our representatives. That's why now I'm apologizing to the people of Zimbabwe to say that we have not thought through the processes of our candidate selection process. That's why we have to go back to the drawing board so that we do not have party candidates but a community candidate, a collective ethic, a converged approach that is driven by the community, driven 
by the stakeholders and opinion makers in a community as opposed to just a political party because these processes produce uh, uh, candidates or individuals who do not have their loyalties in communities and to the people. So I've discovered that. So you would find that most of the MPs and some of the councillors who have remained uh, in parliament on account of uh, our allegiance uh, to uh, a state party or a counterparty formed by Mnangagwa have not shown loyalty. And we are going back to the drawing board, doing an audit, constituents by constituents, word by word, of who is with the people and who is against the people. And once we have done that, we'll be able to authoritatively people, tell people of Zimbabwe where we are in terms of MPs and, and candidates. You know, you, you raise a very important question, and obviously that is the issue that will be a, a big discussion going to 2023, selection of candidates, yeah. primary elections that end up being violent. Are you talking about really relooking at that strategy? There's going to be a completely new county selection process that is centered on communities that is centered on stakeholders is opposed to the party structures. What we have discovered is that party structures are very acidic and toxic, but they are also an important vehicle. So they have to be given their role, but their role is not conclusive and definitive. It must be indicative but not totally dismissive of other key stakeholders. Because when you want a vote, it's not a vote for the party, it's a vote for the constituents. So you have other constituents, stakeholders, that have to be honored and respected. So yes, there's going to be a radical shift and change to the candidate selection process in this uh, organization to allow the community to lead the process. So that the collective ethic, the community ethic, the, 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 the stakeholder-driven uh, process is actually what takes shape and what takes root. I mean, uh, always online hearing people talking about there's no opposition in Zimbabwe, the opposition is dead. What's your response to that? Well, they don't know what they're talking about. Of course, we are an alternative. We are not an opposition. But if you want to understand who we are, go and ask Munangagwa. He will tell you that we are the real game in town. He will tell you that we are the only deal. He will tell you that we mean real significant substance. That's why they have nightmares. They can't think of anything beyond the real politics of survival and what we do. You, you, you alluded to the issue of the citizens' convergence for change. And one of the things is, uh, you know, we've seen that in the past years, not only last year, but five, two years ago, there have been divisions in the MDC. What are you doing to bring together these people into the fold? Well, there are no divisions in the MDC. There's MDC and then ZANU that forms itself within MDC. That's not a division. That's exfoliation. That's purification. That's distillation. Don't call it division. It's actually separation. And people always talk about the opposition is not united in Zimbabwe. People are solid. The base is solid. The people cannot be divided. You know, when you have uh, people at the top who are bought or who look for greener pastures in terms of opportunities uh, because they are fortune seekers, gold diggers, or uh, fortune hunters. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the, the organization is divided or the people are divided. We want missionaries who are clear on the objective to liberate our country, to democratize our country, to grow our country, to modernize our country. And we don't want mercenaries who are seeking opportunities for themselves, who are driven by this pioneer, you know, caller mentality or last supper mentality, the departure lounge mentality, wanting to eat and go in. We don't want eaters. We want people who are going to bring change to this country. And that is what we are focusing on. You know, I'll, I'll talk, for example, for Matebele Land. I have seen that in 2018, you know, these uh, uh, other, I uh, don't call them smaller parties, but there are so many parties. Indeed. At the end of the day, you know, the, you find that the opposition at large would lose. But the majority of people they voted for uh, the parties other than ZANU PF. So, are there any ways of trying to bring all these people under one umbrella, under one uh, banner of some sort? Because we are all under the umbrella of change, we want to make sure that there's a democratic consensus building of this new convergence. And that's why the convergence idea is coming in to converge all the efforts, to converge all the bodies, the progressive forces and the progressive voices in the country so that there's one voice, one voice for change, one voice for the alternative so that once we are able to do that, we are able to build a formidable voice. When we have crossed the Rubicon and crossed the river, 
we can then all talk about other things. But here we have a crocodile infested river that has to be crossed. And let, we, let us all come together. Let us unite. Come, let us reason together. That has been our clarion call. Because it's always important. The more the merrier. It takes two to tango. Let's come together as a people, all the political parties. Let's all converge and have one new broad convergence and new consensus to build our country. No, um, and as we go to an end, I've had Monzora talking about, uh, you know, the MDC uh, or them forming an alliance and uh, so, and then we've had people talking about, I mean, the issue. But they're already in an alliance with yeah. ZANU. So, <laughs> so, so which alliance were they talking about? I'm not so sure. Yeah. I can't, I can't yeah. speak on behalf of yeah. that. Uh, so, as, 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 as uh, the alliance, or sure. as, as, as you as president of the alliance, do you guys, are you thinking of, are you talking about rebranding so that people don't, you know, confuse, you know, uh, your party with the uh, other? People? Zimbabweans are very solid. The people are very clear on what they want. And who we'll obviously be engaging Zimbabweans? There's no confusion. I know people are worried. I know people are concerned. But I can tell you that at the end of the day, Whenever there is a question to our existence, the people are the solution and the answer. And we we'll always revert back to the people. We are a people's party. Our solutions are always driven and sculptured by the people. So don't worry about that. It's an issue that is easily dealt with. At the moment, my preoccupation is to sell the team that is going to bring change to the people of Zimbabwe. And the dream of a new Zimbabwe, a great Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwe in which we are all happy, where there's freedom, justice, solidarity, the dignity for all, you know, jobs for the young boys, you know, opportunities for everyone, transformation, uh, prosperity. That is what we are fighting for. But we have to do that from a position of strength, from a place of, you know, consistency, a place of a genuine desire to provide leadership and alternative. If uh, the, the government of Emerson Nangago has to come to you or the ZAN come to you talking about uh, let's negotiate and find each other, are you willing to talk to them? I've always said finding each other is a national demand, is a national chorus, is a requirement by the people. It's a clarion call from the people. There's need for us because we are one people together. This country belongs to all of us. So the issue of finding each other and having a common is the essence of our convergence call. But what we are not going to allow is a situation whereby we are in a process of a convenience uh, partnership. We need a partnership based on conviction, ideas, ideals, and our goals to make sure that Zimbabwe is a democracy. And Zimbabwe returns to good governance, democracy, proper legitimacy, respecting state institutions, building strong institutions, not, not strong men. Big ideas, not big men so that we are able to move together as a people and celebrating our diversity as a people and all our talents and the skills, unleashing our talents. Because we are great people. We have everything, every resource except leadership. So we have seen the jailing of activists, uh, members of uh, parliament from the MDC. What's your, your, your comment on that? Indeed, there's been an escalation of human rights abuses. There's been an escalation of this uh, approach to have a one-party state. There's been an approach to try and liquidate and pulverize the MDC, but we have remained standing. And we've seen that the onslaught is targeted at the MDC leadership. As I speak, the majority of our leaders have been given trumped up charges. Some are in jail. Some have been incarcerated on spurious charges. And we are even going to see more in terms of uh, the onslaught. But that will not shake us. It's, it's part of the struggle. A struggle is never instant coffee. A struggle is never a, a walk in the park, you know? It's not a bed of roses. At times it's a bed of thorns, but at the end of it all, there's victory at the end of the tunnel, and there's light at the end of the tunnel. And that is what keeps us going. It's a struggle, and that's what it is, you know? Forces of darkness are all conspiring to attack forces of light, and we represent light. They represent darkness. That is our difference, but we are not shaken. So yes, I'm encouraging all our leaders, members, Zimbabweans in general, in general, to be strong and to remain focused. Yeah, finally, <coughs> what's your message to an ordinary Zimbabwean who's, uh, you know, looking at the MDC and saying, you guys, where are you? You see, the end is nigh. It's always darkest before dawn. We may be having challenges, but we must all know that when such challenges are manifest, 
opportunities around the corner. There's going to be a great celebration in this country. We are working on it, we are preparing for it, and we are ready for it. So my message out there, Zimbabweans, let's be ready to fight for our rights. Let's be ready to celebrate our victories. Let's be ready to defend democracy. Let's be ready to uphold human rights and good governance. Let's be ready to also be our own liberators, because we are indeed our own liberators. And we, and none but ourselves, we can do it. We, the people, shall govern. Uh, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to talk to you. I think there are so many people who are asking questions about whether the MDC alliance is still alive, whether there is still opposition in Zimbabwe, and those questions have been raised. But uh, what I find interesting are two issues uh, that were mentioned in this interview. The issue of uh, the candidates, that there is going to be a new process uh, of selecting candidates, because I know uh, in the past elections I've covered a number of uh, uh, primary elections within the MDC and other parties, and there are always you know, uh, violence sometimes, there are divisions, and so many issues that go on. But uh, the president of the MDC Alliance, Nelson Chamisa, says there will be a new way of uh, selecting candidates that includes not only the party but the community. So we'll be watching uh, for that and see how this new way influences the way candidates are going to be selected. But he also says those who are MDC MPs currently uh, who decided not to be loyal to the party, you know, chose uh, the other way rather than uh, that of which they were selected uh, or elected by the people. So it means, I mean, my own understanding uh, is simply saying we no longer have any candidates who are going to start afresh and build the movement because these ones that are there currently are not ours. They've decided to pledge loyalty to other people. That's my understanding. I know people might be having a different understanding or a different understanding of that statement. And uh, I am sure there will be a lot of debate around these issues and some of the issues that were raised. And the site were willing to hear more from individuals, from people. You can go on our Facebook page, uh, site ZW. On Twitter, we are at site. And uh, you can get in touch with us as well uh, to hear your views on this interview and many other issues that we always talk about. My name is Zenzele Ndevele. You can follow me on Twitter at Zenzele. And, uh, Till we meet again on other programs, have a good day.